You have no power here. Clerk. <laughs> I will draw you. Technician. This poison is drawn from a wound. <laughs> if I go, your economy dies. You did not kill me. You will not kill him. Stellaris. I The Lem update is out, traditions have been reworked, and now non-hive mind biological empires have a whole new set of tricks up their sleeve. Before the Lem update, technicians were, without a shadow of a doubt, the best workers for producing resources. If you stack bonuses into them, for instance, I'm talking about the edict, I am talking about the technologies that add extra bonuses to their output, and of course the building that adds to their base value, if you stack bonuses into them, you could get a phenomenal amount of energy credits out of your technicians. But now, with Lem, we can do some wholly disgusting tactics to get lots and lots of energy credits from a different job. And that job is merchants. Stand aside, technicians. Trade value is coming back. What I'm going to show off today is both a build for a specific empire, but also a strategy that every single non-hive mind biological empire can follow and can get benefit from. This is really good for anyone else in the mid to late game. For specific empire builds, you can start reaping the benefits of this in the early game. But what we're going to be doing is using merchants to get an unholy amount of trade value and use that to balance our economy. If you enjoy this video, please purge that like button. This is the build I want to show off today. Now, these are an interesting uh, species here. We have gone with Thrifty for extra trade value. We've also gone with Void Dwellers. Now we've gone for Void Dwellers and you'll see why that is in a little bit. You could also run a very similar build with Shattered Ring. You would be able to uh, take use of this strategy to an even greater degree in the initial phase of the game with Shattered Ring. Although as you can't build more ring segments in the same way that you can build more orbital habitats, you will be limited in your expansion options quite dramatically. So you'd need some conquest or migration to pull off a Shattered Ring start, though it would be quite powerful in the early run portion of the game. Now, in terms of traits, Thrifty is in here. We do want that extra trade value. Otherwise, I've just gone for Intelligent, Natural Engineer, some nice science, and uh, we've also gone with some negatives that aren't such a big deal for us. But then we go over to Civics. Now, Civics is where it gets a little interesting. We are, of course, going to run Functional Architecture, one of the best Civics now in LEM, as it gives you two extra build slots. And build slots at the start of the game, those build slots, they are like gold dust. You would love to have them. The other thing we've gone for is Merchant Guild. Not something I would generally run before LEM, but let's have a look what this does. So capital buildings provide merchant jobs. That's okay, that's fine. Merchants also produce two unity. So what we're going to be doing with this build, which is heavily, heavily relying on merchants, what we're going to be doing is putting lots of these merchants out and utilizing so much extra unity. In terms of ethics, I've just thrown in a couple here. Xenophobe, as I wanted to point out, you don't even need to go Xenophile for extra trade value bonuses to get good effects here. And it can be nice to enslave aliens. And then also Fanatic Materialist. That is quite a good one. It's going to buff our research speed and reduce robot upkeep. Here we are a few years into the game and what have we done? Well, first and most importantly, we have taken the mercantile tradition. That is the linchpin to this entire endeavor, this entire strategy. And this is something that any non-hive mind biological empire can take advantage of. So you take mercantile and you have a tradition in there called commercial enterprise. That allows your commercial zones to provide one merchant job. So rather than just getting three clerks, you also get three clerks and a merchant. That merchant will be producing, if you've got the extra trade value uh, trait, an extra 25% trade value, taking you up to 15 trade value base. And then on top of that, they are producing two unity in addition to any resource output modifiers you might have. 
that is going to give you a phenomenal amount of energy and a phenomenal amount of unity just from the jobs. But once we have that trade value, we don't have to just have energy. Now, before, before LEM, you had a trade policy which let you go with consumer benefit, marketplace of ideas, or just the base. Now this is locked behind a tradi tradition, which is this adaptive economic policies. You are going to want to take this and you're going to want to start producing more consumer goods. We've taken it, here it is producing rather than just one energy per trade value, half an energy and 0.25 consumer goods. That's balanced our consumer goods at 2205 where we are now comfortably. We're actually selling some uh, to push ourselves uh, better on the energy front there. And on our planets, on our habitats, we're queuing up commercial zones. We're also going to be building trade districts because these districts are going to give us more merchant jobs. We're going to be able to stack a whole host of merchant jobs on to be able to take use of those policies. In addition to that, you're also going to want to change over your habitats to trade stations. That is going to give you another boost to your trade value, an extra 20%. So at the moment here on this one station, we are getting 82 trade value and we've only got four merchants. That's not many merchants. Pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. And now we're going to do something a little weird. So I've taken a system here and I've not taken the system between my capital and that system. This system has a planet on. I am sending out a colony ship to colonize that planet. I am void dwellers. It is not a great idea to do this regularly, but in this case, it's going to be a great benefit to us. So now we have our planet here. It has been colonized. We're going to make a sector here. I don't care about assigning a governor. That's not important. I'm also not going to build any buildings. The final thing we need to have is the federation tradition. So we want to take diplomacy and federation. Why is that? What on earth am I doing? Have I gone mad? No, I haven't gone mad. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this sector here. The reason I've been able to create it is that I haven't got any other systems linking it to my core sector, even though it is within three jumps. I will then go to my planet and sector log and I'm going to create a vassal. Let's randomize the name. Now we have a, a vassal empire of ours, very close by, very loyal and generally very happy. We are going to send an envoy there to improve relations and we are going to do something crazy. We're going to release this vassal. And as soon as we've released it, we are going to send them offers for every single pact we can think of under the sun. It really doesn't matter. They should accept almost all of them. We are going to try and form a federation. Now, they're at minus, uh, minus 48 at the moment. There's a couple of things we can do about that. We can either just give them a whole host of resources like uh, minerals and uh, energy credits, for instance. I'm going to do that. That 107 is going to be added here to our relations once they accept the deal, which will improve our ability to ask for this form federation. Now it's only at minus eight. So I'm going to grab just a couple of favors. And then as soon as I have them, I will be forming a trade league. This trade league is going to give me access to a specific policy. Brilliant, we have the federation. Now let's see what we've got. Well, first off, we should suffer very little in the way of uh, cohesion penalties because this empire has the same ethics as us. We can immediately assign an envoy in there. And we do want to, I will say that you probably want to stop this from expanding. So the next thing I'm going to do is use my construction ships to grab all of these adjacent worlds near them just to stop them reaching out. But they should be very pitiful. I mean, they have one world. They have nothing in the way of really resources except these base resources that they're getting. And they've given us access to trade league. Well, what does that do? Let's go to our policies. It means our trade policy, instead of being uh, one of the previous ones I talked about, is now set to give us a quarter of, an, a, quarter of a unity per uh, trade value, a quarter of a consumer good, and half an energy credit. That, when I get to the end of the month, is going to phenomenally increase my output of unity. Let's get to the end of the month and see where we are at. 143. So I'm using a couple of my habitats here, which do have some merchant jobs on them to push that value up. 
I have scientists doing their whole science thing. I am going to keep increasing the number of scientists I have got. So my capital here, I'm going to switch over to science production. And then on another world, I will probably switch over to some alloy production. The next, uh, the next thing that I'm going to take in terms of my ascension perks, and you could argue I should have taken this as my first ascension perk, is Voidborn. Those extra two building slots, we're going to use them for more commercial zones to get more merchants. These merchants are each. Each merchant is going to be producing as they're making 15 trade value with, and we're looking here at the bonuses, up to 45% additional bonus there to that so that is 15 plus the 40 percent means that each of those pops is producing around 21 trade value now if we rushed into some of the technician technologies we'd be getting around 21 energy credits which is fine but that 21 trade value is being converted into 11 energy credits five consumer goods and five unity Plus, we're getting additional unity output from this tradition, uh, from our civic, I mean, to unity base per merchant as well. This is going to push massive unity rush on us. We're going to be able to get lots of unity. We are going to have no problem with our consumer goods. I'm actually going to be selling as many as I can. And that means I can push those consumer goods into more researchers and other such things. I should also at this point mention I should really change to academic privilege because there's going to be no harm to me from the extra consumer good upkeep and it will be very good to have that extra bonus to our research output, the 10% we'll be getting. In addition to the bonus to happiness which will further boost stability. Now as we have so many consumer goods, distributing luxury resources is a no-brainer here at this point. Make sure you don't do it if you're already benefiting from the max uh, bonus you can get from extra amenities, which is 20%. So for instance here, I've already got that 20%. There's no use in distributing luxury goods. Here we are 30 years later in the game. Now, some of those initial habitats I have built up a bit. I've got a, uh, an alloy habitat here. It's producing a fair few alloys. My homeworld is really pumping out those uh, research, uh, research resources. But I do also have a trade habitat. Here is trade value with only 16 pops, one uh, administrator, and really actually I should probably have made sure to push that into a merchant and got that off world if I really wanted to kind of min max this. But I've got all the trade districts I can get my fingers on. I've got some commercial zones, 15 merchants, and that has given me 385 trade value. That's basically 100 unity, 100 consumer goods, and 200 energy credits. Merchants are now absolutely fantastic. But what if you didn't start with, uh, with a Void Dweller build and with Merchant Guilds? Well, don't worry, that isn't a problem. Later on, you can build trade, uh, you can build habitats and make them trade habitats, as well as using your third civic to grab merchant guilds. But even without merchant guilds, you are going to be getting a phenomenal amount of trade value, which will be converted into unity. Yes, I wouldn't have a 30 or 40 unity here without merchant guilds, and I wouldn't have one extra merchant job but I would still be getting the same amount of trade value. And you can do this as any empire. It would be even better if I managed to go with Xenophile rather than Xenophobe. And as I level up my federation here, I will be getting additional bonuses to my trade value plus 5%. And there are, uh, there are, and there are resolutions you can pass in the galactic community to increase your trade value even further. Trade value has come from behind, it's taken us by surprise, and is now a fantastic resource. Now this is a Shattered Ring. On the Shattered Ring, if you take that as an origin, you get Trade Districts. With this, uh, with this style of play, with this strategy, for each Trade District, you can get a Merchant job. So here I have 21 Merchants on this ring. This is not a specific build, I've, I've actually conquered uh, this, uh, I've actually conquered this Shattered Ring, here it is. This is actually playing as a uh, as a fanatic purifier, but I've thrown in merchant guilds just for the, that extra unity, and now 
I've got a phenomenal amount of trade. This is actually providing almost all of my consumer goods the, that I need. It's absolutely bonkers how much trade value you can get from these merchants and that is very very good it's great to have some change in solaris i am very happy with it please comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the new shakeup to trade and energy credits in solaris and if you would like to support my channel you can do so by joining the channel here on youtube or heading over to patreon and becoming a patron I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of my supporters. It really does help.